Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Reactor Toots. My name is Peter and we're going to be talking about envelopes and macros today. This is like the fifth time I've tried to do this video and something always pop, uh, something always kind of pops up. So we're just going to get right into it. Envelopes uh, are used to control amplitude or pretty much anything else you want it to control it to. It's just kind of a line segment that goes up and down. Uh, the most established envelope is known as the ADSR envelope, and so you get there by going into built-in module envelopes in ADSR. Now you see there are five inputs in addition to the standard ADS and R. We have a G input. They're all event type. Um, G, if we mouse over it, we can see that it is an input for some kind of gate signal and, uh, and a value greater than zero starts the envelope and determines its peak value. So that's a very helpful tidbit of information to know is the value that goes into that G input will be the value that the envelope peaks at, the highest value it reaches. So if you needed it to go to 100, uh, that's completely doable. But for now, if we want to use it to uh, control these oscillators or whatever sound source that goes from zero to one, obviously the most logical thing to use to, to trigger the gate, uh, to trigger the envelope with would be this MIDI gate input. So this I think is the synth that we left off with, uh, just some MIDI information going into an oscillator, going into a selector, then going into a filter with a switch to control which filter type. So from here, we can hook up the G MIDI input to the G input of the envelope, because that's what we're going to be using to trigger the envelope. So every time we hit a MIDI note, it'll go through the ADSR envelope. Then we attach the output of the ADSR envelope to the input of the A of all of these oscillators, the amplitude input for all of these oscillators, like so. And then from here, we could just right click on these inputs and click create control. And they will create, and it will create some kind of uh, typical range values for each of these. If we kind of take a look, attack goes from zero to 80, that's great. Uh, decay goes from zero to 80, that's fine. Sustain goes from zero to one, which is exactly what we want. And then release goes from zero to 80. So that is perfect. If we, and if we look over to the panel view by clicking panel up here, we see Reactor has put all the knobs on the upper left hand side of the panel, which is, that's, it's, it's a way of saying it loves you very much. So put it in some kind of fashion that you find appealing. Attack, decay, sustain, release is, makes the most sense to me. Um, right, so our patch is looking pretty good, but it's starting to look a little bit messy or a little bit cluttered. And this is a great way to get uh, into macros is uh, explaining what the purpose of macros are and why they're so valuable. Macros are a way to contain different parts of your instrument. Um, it's a used to make your patch modular so you can transplant and copy different segments and functions of your synthesizer or instrument with relative ease and have it be kind of transplantable in, in the way that you can use one thing for many different things, which is what we're exactly going to do. We're gonna right click and go into macro, select two, one in, one out. Now we have an empty macro. Let's right click, click structure and other pane so it opens up on the right hand side of the screen like this. And now we see the inside of the macro is completely empty. So let's select by clicking, drag, clicking and dragging this entire envelope segment right here. Click cut selection, right click, click paste. And now we have the envelope inside of the macro. So from here, we can see that there are inputs and outputs of the macro, and it should be transparent in the way that if I attach the gate into the input of the macro, uh, into the input of the macro like so, and attach the input of the macro to the G input of the envelope, it'll function the exact same way as we had before. And the same thing applies for the output. 
So let's hook that up and then hook this up to all of these. And if we press our key, we should hear enveloped audio, which we do. Excellent. Uh, from here, it's a really good idea to name your macro so you know what they are, what function they perform. So let's call this basic env for envelope. And from here, we can actually name the inputs and outputs just by double clicking on the input. Let's call it g because a gate goes in there, as you can see right there. Um, cool. So if we wanted to save this envelope, because I'd imagine that we'd be using this basic envelope a lot of different, uh, many different times in the future, we could just right click, click save macro as, and then save it to a place where you keep all your reactor stuff, just like me, and then call it basic envelope 101. And then say you were building another synthesizer and you wanted to use that same exact macro without building it all over again, you can just go into macro, click load, go into the folder that you save all your stuff in, and then it'll be right there, basic envelope 101, and then it'll give us the exact same macro. Perfect. Awesome. So let's shoot over to the panel for a second. And whenever you put something, uh, contain something in a macro, it'll put a little border around the panel controls in which you've contained. So now we have some kind of awesome little border that labels it basic envelope, which is very helpful. Uh, if you wanted to eliminate that border, that's entirely possible just by clicking on the title, going into view and clicking no frame and that just takes it away. Uh, line frame is the default frame, and then you can click 3D frame, which is just a bolded frame. Um, yeah. If you uh, wanted to make your own bitmaps and GUI elements, you just select it from here. Um, we're not gonna get into that for a while, but um, if you wanted to move this entire macro around, we could just click the wrench and then click the title of the macro and move it around like so. It automatically resizes itself depending on where its elements are. It's kind of elastic, which is kind of funky at first, but later you learn to deal with it and it's not so bad. Cool. So we're going to close this, go back into the instrument and we have one thing in a macro. Let's put everything in their own separate macros. So let's contain these four different oscillators and the selector object into one macro called OSC for oscillator, not open source control, but uh, oscillator. So let's hit new two and two out. Um, oop. Let's hit new macro two and two out. Just select all of this. Apple X or Control X, double click, click paste. And then let's label these inputs P and A for on, or A for amplitude. Cool. And we only need one output, so we'll go ahead and just delete that output, rename this to out. It's important to label everything um, accordingly, just so it, your patch is easy to understand. It's just common practice to label things that are coherent, coherently. So already our patch is looking a lot cleaner. And we can dissect our patch um, with relative ease because everything is kind of contained and everything has its own space. So if you were to look at this, you don't even need to open up this macro to tell or to, to see that this is the uh, amplitude envelope and this is the oscillator section. Just from the way that we've labeled it, we can see that, oh, there's the, uh, there's the amplitude input for all the oscillators, we're guessing, and then there's the pitch, and then et cetera, et cetera. Shoot on over to the panel view, and then we see that it has its own border. Awesome. So, yeah. Uh, that is, uh, those are macros and envelopes. And next tutorial, we're going to be doing a little bit more with envelopes as more of uh, control signals, um, controlling maybe the filter cutoff and maybe get into a little bit of LFO action. So stick around, tutorial over. Thanks for watching.